Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us again on another episode of the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Stafford, and today I have with me Kyle Pavlich. Pavlich or Pavlik? Uh, Pavlich. Pavlich. Okay, I got it right the first time. Kyle is a coach of student entrepreneurs teaching business fundamentals and skills while helping create successful and profitable businesses through his Student Works Management Program. Kyle, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me, Kevin. Looking sharp. I'm feeling shabby with my with my button down over here. <laughs> I've got a bunch of meetings today, so I wasn't for that. <laughs> well, let's get cracking. Let's start at the beginning. What brought you into coaching? Uh, yeah, well, you know, I, I, I work with a, an organization called the Student Works Management Program. You know, I, I basically, they teach students how to be entrepreneurs um, and get fundamentals. And I, I ran a business with them for, for a few years. I did, you know, I did decently well. And, and when I was presented with the opportunity to really coach other people and help teach them how to run a business, you know, I, I, I you know, really, I really jumped at it. And, you know, I, I you know, I, I, I found that I, that I love coaching because, you know, ultimately it's, it's cool to be able to run your, run your own business, but ultimately when you're, when you're coaching all these other people, you really get to see things at a really high level and be able to provide value on so many different fronts. That's a very, a, a common through line with a lot of, a lot of coaches origin stories is that they were, they were helped, they were served and mm-hmm. their urge was to then give back and serve as well. They found it so powerful. It seems like that's at the foundation of so many, so many coaches passions. Absolutely. Yeah. What would you say that you are doing in your coaching business that is unique? Not necessarily like one of one, but like something that you feel like differentiates you in the coaching mm-hmm. sphere. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I, I think I think in in the Sumer Spanish program in general, but definitely within my team, I think the the level of of accountability that we really hold people to and the integrity, the integrity that we expect out of people is at a level that I, I've never really seen in any other organization, you know, and, and, uh, and, and that's ultimately like what, that's a big part of what we do is, is really like teaching people to have just insanely high levels of integrity and holding them such a high level of accountability for them to be able to run these incredible businesses while they're in school, managing the studies and, and, and doing uh, all that as well. That, uh, that actually brings me to what I just had in mind. I was like, how do you how do you keep all of this, not separate necessarily, but how do you keep every, all of these plates spinning? Because it feels like, you know, you've got, obviously you've got your own very successful life and business and you have all these people that you're helping, you're coaching, you're holding them accountable. I mean, do you have, do you have extra hours in your day that you're hiding somewhere? How do you, how do you keep it all balanced and moving forward? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. And, <laughs> and you know, you know, I, I, I've ultimately, I've, I've found like it, it all kind of comes down to just productivity and, and, you know, making use of, of the time that you have in the best possible way. I know I used to, like, I used to be a student and that was all I was. And, and I used to think, oh, wow, my days are so full of, with just like schoolwork and I'm so busy. I couldn't possibly take on anything else. And then I took something else on and I just started getting a whole lot better habits with, you know, like I, I, when I, when I would do what I would study, instead of spending an entire day at a library sitting there, I'd put my phone in airplane mode, set the timer for 90 minutes and I get done in, a, in you know, 90 minutes, what would take me an entire day before. And, and when you start developing those better work habits, you know, honestly, the, the time, the time just, you know, the, the availability just, just grows. And so once that happens, I, you know, I, whenever I have space, I always like to throw something else in there and, and, you know, I, I still think there's still room for improvement in, in terms of like, you know, taking on more stuff once I develop even stronger habits. So. It's kind of funny. Something that we've, we've discovered is very common is how basically a, a feeling, a sense of a lack of time is a very mm-hmm. common, a common hurdle, a common challenge for a lot of coaches, for a lot of people, quite frankly. Yeah. But what we've discovered is that time management is it really is about time creation because it's essentially like when you learn how to manage your time better, you are essentially creating more time. It's a very, it's a very powerful catalyst for all the things you want to do in life. And we just keep, we keep finding different ways that people are stumbling into that truth where it's like, oh, it's not just about organizing my time or if I have everything in its neat little box, everything will be perfect. There's this, this extra effect where it does feel like you are creating more time by just being more intentional and more efficient with your time. And everybody's got their different tweaks to their different systems. And then they find what works for them, which I think is an important part of this. Everybody thinks that you can just like have a recipe for how to manage your time. And then it just comes in and you're like, okay, that'll solve that problem forever. Mm -mm. It's a, it's a moving target. It's something you kind of have to evolve and adapt to yourself. It seems like you've done just that very successfully. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone's different. And ultimately everyone, you know, everyone's going to have a different strategy or what works with their personality. But, you know, I've, I've really found just the, the, the amount that you can actually get done in a day is, is, is incredible. If you are actually focused, like when you look at people like, you know, like, 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 
Oprah, for example, she has the exact same amount of time as anyone else. And, you know, you look at everything she gets done in a day. It's not, she, it's not that she has more time. It's just that she is so much more intentional and effective with, with the time that she does have. Mm-hmm. And she's built up to it as well. She didn't just have a realization and suddenly everything changed. She exactly. built it brick by brick over an entire career. And that's, you know, that's the, the path, the joy, quite frankly, that we have in front of us if we're willing to embrace it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we've talked a lot about time. Time aside, what would you say is your biggest challenge as a coach? Biggest challenge as a coach, finding the right people, for sure. You know, I, I mean, I, we, put in, we put in so much effort to really find, uh, find in, in incredible, incredible people for, for our program. And I put in so much work to find incredible people for my team, you know, and there's no system that is foolproof, right? You know, it's, it, it, it's, it's incredibly difficult to, you know, separate in the, in the, you know, application process and interview processes, who's just a good inter- interviewer and who's actually a good candidate. And, and so, um, so I would say that's probably the, the, the biggest hurdle is really just going through so, so, so many people to find, the right people. And then even sometimes making mistakes with that and, you know, and, and, you know, continuing to, to work on that. And ultimately, like at the end of the day, the people you have is like half the battle, right? So you can, you can coach, you can put, you know, everything you can into coaching, but if you don't have solid people on your team, it's not going to matter. Yeah, that's perfect. I feel like that's, I was going to have, have you make a distinction there at the beginning, but I could tell you were going to get there anyway, because it's, it's being careful in how you choose your team members and your clients. Because it's exactly there's a certain there are certain requirements that if they're going to be a good fit if they're going to work well with you that overlap between who you're going to be working with on your team and who you're going to be working with as a client. I was going to say working for, but really it's they're both collaborative relationships. Yeah, they're they're very they're very similar, and, and you know I I think a lot of people view view you know sales as a very one sided one sided process. It's one person trying to convince someone else to to go with them, and that. Absolutely is the case for, for some organizations, but if you look at, you know, organizations with really effective salespeople, it's actually going both ways. So they're just as much screening out people when they show up to a meeting as, you know, the, the potential client is screening out them. And, you know, I know I, one thing I learned in, in my growth is I actually started just walking away from some meetings and sales when I could really feel like it just wasn't a good fit and we wouldn't be you know, mutually beneficial. We wouldn't be able to really provide as much value as I really like to, to provide the clients that I work with. The power of no, I'm telling you, we, we, we learn it early, but we spend the rest of our lives learning that lesson. It's a, and it's, a, it's a no, not just that protects you, but a no is in service to the person you're saying no to as well. It's something it's, mm-hmm. it's important to remember that you have to remember the power of no and choose them and use them wisely because it serves everyone if you're doing it right. Of course, of course, yeah. I could talk with you for for hours, probably. But where can people find you online? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I'm I'm very active on LinkedIn specifically. I do manage my other socials, but particularly LinkedIn. You know, they can always find find out uh, or find out more about about me and about about Student Works in general just by going to the the website studentworks.com. I've also I it, you know some of my other businesses I have, for example, Z Consults, which is a Generation Z consulting company that works with uh, various organizations to really you know, help bridge the gap between younger generations, older generations. We also have a website, zedconsults.ca, Z-E-D-C-O-N-S-U-L-T-S.ca. So, so through any of those methods, really, but, but definitely on LinkedIn, I'm, I'm, I'm very active on that platform, particularly. Excellent. Well, Kyle, thank you so much for joining me on the Coffee with Coaches podcast today. Thank you all, audience, for listening, and we'll hear you all next time. Thanks so much, Kevin. Thanks for having me.